Welcome back to our returning viewers and welcome if you're watching for the first time. Remember to hit the subscribe button if you have not yet subscribed and to turn on all notifications to ensure that you know whenever I upload a video. With that said, welcome to Program Code 101, the place where we learn the art and skill required to develop code. I'm your instructor, Mr. Decoder. In the last video, we discussed terms associated with algorithms. We mentioned that an algorithm is a step-by-step -step approach or set of rules that allow the solving of a problem. We also mentioned that algorithms can be represented as pseudocode and flowchart. In today's video, we're going to be looking into the requirements needed to develop pseudocode. There are a number of keywords and phrases that are commonly used when developing a pseudocode. A keyword is a word or phrase that is used in an algorithm or a program to represent a specific action. These keywords cannot be used outside of their intended purpose. Examples of these keywords include print, display, write, read, and the list goes on. Now, these are not all keywords that are represented in pseudocodes, but these are the most commonly used keywords. As we go along, we will be introduced to other examples of keywords that can be represented in our pseudocode. A point to note is that even though a particular method will be applied to construct pseudocode developed in this as well as future videos, pseudocodes may have different formats depending on the individual or group that is tasked with developing the pseudocode. With this said, let us look at the steps required to develop a pseudocode. The steps one and two can often times be interchanged Step one is the keyword start. Step two looks at declaration. Step three, initialization. Four, prompt statements. Five, input statements. Six are processing statements. Seven, output statements. And step eight is stop. Stop is also a keyword. Now, as we go along, we're going to be looking at each of these steps in detail. Emphasis will only be placed on step one, two, and three. Step one looks at the start keyword. So start is a keyword used to indicate where the program instructions or executions will begin. After start, the next thing on the list is declaration. Declaration, as you said here, is the process of attaching a data type to a variable name. We need to pay attention to two key terms in this definition. The first key term, data type, Second key term, variable name. Our data type, these are used to specify the type of data that is expected to be entered or stored in variables. A data type is classified based on being a part of a specific category. There are two main categories where data types are normally classified. The first category is referred to as Merck data types. The numerate data types, we have what are referred to as integers. Now, as it says here, an integer is a positive or negative whole number, and we have a couple of examples. Another numeric data type is real. Real is a positive or negative fractional or decimal number, so all your decimal values will be classified as real. The other classification that data types will fall in are non-numerate data types. Non-numerate data types are related to text or character entries being accepted into a program. There are two specific non-numerate data types that are generally used in pseudocodes. These include characters and string. Now, a character is a single letter, number, or symbol, while a string is a group of two or more characters that are combined. We normally specify characters and string through the use of double quotation marks. Now you may be wondering why are numbers classified as string? Now for this particular sequence of numbers, this is how your telephone number will be structured. Because of the hyphen that is placed within this number, you will not be able to use this value in any form of calculation. Hence it is classified as a string. The other key term from the description of declaring is the term 
variable. A variable is a memory or storage location whose values or items are expected to change throughout the execution or the life of a program. So the variable is just a storage or holding location for the values or the items that will be entered. Now these variables are made reference to by their variable names. So the variable name, as is mentioned here, is the name that is used to identify the memory or the storage location of the variable. Now variables can be seen to be storage containers that can hold one item at a time and that item is specialized based on its data type. For example, you're trying to place a specific shape in a specialized container, only the designed shape will fit in that holding container. There are special rules used to guide the naming of our variables. Let us look through some of these rules. Variables should, rule number one, be meaningful in bracket related to what is being stored. When we are writing our programs, you will notice that a number of variables will be within that program. It is required that we give that variable a meaningful name and the name should be in relation to whatever we're storing in that variable. Another rule in terms of naming variables, variables should not start with a number or symbol. When we start to write programs, you will realize that a part of the syntax of the language will specify that the variable name must always start with a letter. The third rule of naming variables indicate that there should not be any space within our variables. For example, if you're using two words, what you would be required to do is that you can put the words together without any space, or you can use a specific symbol, which is the underscore, to join both words together. Another rule for naming variables, variables should not be a keyword. We mentioned keywords earlier as terms, phrases, that have specific meaning. So because these terms have specific meanings, we, are, we can't use them outside of the purpose in which they were designed. The last rule is that the variable should not be too long. So this is more of a recommendation than a rule. We keep our variable names relatively short so that once we are required to rewrite these variable names multiple times throughout the programs, it will not be an issue to do so. Now, let us look into the format and structure of declaring a variable. Examples of declaration. As you're seeing, we have a format that is normally used in variable declaration. So we have the keyword declare followed by the variable name that is going to be used to store the item. And then the data type. Now, how exactly are we going to be declaring our variables? So here we have two examples of how variables can be declared. So again, we have the keyword declare. For the first line of declaration, we have the variable names number one and num2. Now these are perfectly valid variable names based on the rules of naming variables that we just discussed. The second line that we have here is declaring two sets of variable names again, but these are of a different data type. Once we are declaring variables of different data types, we use separate lines to make reference to these variables. Items or values in programs can also be stored in what are referred to as constants. Constant is a memory or storage location whose values or items are not expected to change throughout the execution or life of the program. Constants also have constant names, and these again follow the same description of a variable name. So the variable and the constant, they are both used to hold items at specific memory locations, but the variable, the items stored at that memory location are expected to change, while in your constants, as the name suggests, the items stored in that location are not expected to change. So let us look at the format of constants and how we can declare our constants. So here we have the format of a constant. We also have a keyword being used 
and that keyword is const. So we have the keyword const followed by the name of the constant. Now, constants are somewhat different in terms of declaration than variables in that we don't specify the data type. What normally happens is that whatever items are being stored in the constant, constant name will automatically assume that the type of the value being stored. The example of constant declaration. Here we have two constants being declared. One constant is referred to as tax rate and the other constant is referred to as pi. So for these two constants being declared, once these values are hit and they're not expected to change throughout the execution of the program that we're creating. Step three in the pseudocode development process looks at initialization. Now, initialization is the process used to set a starting value to our variables. Starting value used is dependent on the data type that is attached to the variable name. Examples of initializing variables. Now, so if we're declaring an integer, we will use a starting value zero. For example, num equals zero. Same thing goes for real data types. For example, if the data type cost was declared as a real, we use the value 0, 0.0. For characters and string, it is somewhat different from our numeric data types. We use the starting value as open and close quotation marks, and this indicates a blank or empty space that is being placed inside the variable itself. Now, in concluding this video, I'm going to put all of what we've looked at so far in the order which it's supposed to be aligned. So this is our example of how we would construct a pseudocode with the steps that are already outlined. So we have our start keyword, which is used to signify the beginning of execution. Then we have two lines that are used to specify that variables are being declared. The first line of declaration looks at declaring the variables number one and number two as integers. The second line of declaration, we're declaring the variable f name and l name as string. The other section looks at the initialization phase. Number one is initialized to zero. Number two initialized to zero as well. And our two character variables or two non-numeric variables are both initialized using the open and close quotation marks. Oh my God! Wow! In our next video, we're going to be looking at the concept of utilizing our prompt statements as well as our input statement. Now, please let me know if the content and explanations provided are helpful to you in the comment section below. Thank you for joining us for yet another lesson. But to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm your instructor, Mr. Decoder. Until next time, take care.